welcome back to CJ Sports. We are Charlotte and Corey, and in this vlog, we're spending 48 hours in Madrid. Madrid, the vibrant capital of Spain, is a destination that offers something for every traveller. From its world-renowned art museums and historic landmarks to its bustling food scene and nightlife, Madrid has it all. With a rich history dating back to the 9th century and a modern cosmopolitan vibe, the city has captured the hearts of visitors from all over the world. Whether you're a first-time visitor or a seasoned traveller, there is always something new and exciting to discover in Madrid. Join us on this journey as we explore the top attractions, hidden gems and local favourites that make Madrid a must-visit destination. We have jumped on a free walking tour this morning in Madrid to learn a little bit more about the place because we know nothing about it. Here we go. Okay, so we're on the tour now and it's actually a history tour. Uh, the Spanish guy who's running it has really fun, really informative. We've got quite a big group of people with us. A lot of Americans because it's spring break, we found out. And I was wondering, there's so many Americans in Madrid. That is why. But yes, really enjoying it. We'll have to learn more. I told you, I'm not from here. I wouldn't get offended. I don't like it. Standing outside the entrance of the Royal Palace and there is a very big queue for people to get in if they haven't got a ticket. I think if you get your ticket you can kind of skip and get in there early. But it does remind me of Buckingham Palace very much so. And then opposite this we have the Cathedral of Madrid. We learnt on our tour that this palace has so many rooms, more than Buckingham Palace. It has 3,418 rooms and when it was first built there was no bathrooms. They have been added now though so don't worry. But it's absolutely packed in there for the rooms so we're going to go inside and take a look. When we're in they didn't confiscate any of our camera gear. We still have our backpacks. They just do a security check but there is lockers in there if you need it. Now yesterday the queue was massive so we booked online last night. Paid a little bit extra for a booking fee but today typically there's hardly any queue. But still we were in within five minutes after security check and checking our tickets. And now we better go inside because we've got 3,418 rooms to discover. Slight issue, we did have to take the backpacks off and a half an hour speech about where we're allowed to filming and photos but pretty much the whole first section is fine and a bit at the end we're not allowed any photos or any film so let's go. <laughs> Well, we've just come out of the Royal Palace and I've got to say that was phenomenal. It was so decadent. Charlotte actually considered it to be a bit grotesque. <laughs> <laughs> grotesque in the way that it was like so much wealth and yeah, yeah it's just like, whoa, but it was stunning. We only managed to film probably about less than 10% of what we saw. Yeah, and what we show you on this video is nowhere near as decadent as it gets. The most royal room, the throne room was just unreal like they had this huge painting on the ceiling and a lot of the rooms did where it's just like in the clouds these fantastical um, imaginative scenes of like gods and um, cherubs and animals and like people building the world and gods I don't know it was just the dining room was incredible it was about 40 seats a 40 seat dining table and it was yeah it was stunning uh, it was really incredible. Definitely worth a visit. Yes, 100%. Definitely. It's more like a uh, gallery, isn't it? Yeah. Like a museum. More like a museum that you're walking around. It doesn't feel like a home. People used to live there, but not anymore. Yeah. The king who commissioned the build, he said he wanted a room for every day of the rest of his life so he could spend a day in a new room every day. And they made 3,418 rooms, which is ridiculous. And we've only seen probably about 20 of them maybe yeah and he died before it was completed he didn't even get to see the whole thing done so there is the official royal residence of the spanish monarchy yet no one lives there <laughs> and just as a quick side note if you're into guns and wars and all the armory kind of stuff the armory is located in this corner over here um, and they have lots of armor from different wars and different heroes and stuff from the war. There was also children's armour in there as well as horses, dogs, um, all sorts. So yeah, if you're into that stuff, 
that way. If you're on a bit of a budget or you want to save some money, then you can go to the palace for free. It is free between 4 and 6 p.m. However, there's a catch. You need to wait in queues like this. We are staying at the Social Hall, which is a stone's throw from the palace and our balcony actually overlooks the palace. Let's go show you. So the Social Hub is such a quirky and cool hotel. It's for students and for travellers. So we are here obviously as travelling guests and the location is fantastic for us because we are just a stone's throw away from the metro and opposite the Royal Palace. And actually this is our balcony. So our balcony view is pretty hard to beat. We can wake up in the morning and say hello to the Royal Palace. Yes, it is a very nice spot, isn't it? For swimming pool, beautiful palace. It is a bit chilly in there, but I imagine in summer, this place goes off. But it's lovely here, so the heat from the, the sun. window. So if you go to any of the social hubs all over Europe, they're kind of everywhere now, you will find that they are very quirky, very unique and full of art. You can see the bottom of the pool because there's a glass bottle we're trying to figure out where it was leading to and we found it. We are chilling up in the rooftop bar right now. I only just discovered this place today because there's like loads of little nooks and crannies around the hotel to find. Um, and this is just down from the pool, so we're on level four here. We're sort of next to the road, we've got nice blue skies, whitewashed walls, and very cool like nooks and crannies around the place. We've got a big giraffe behind us. I've got some very squished avocado on my avocado toast <laughs> and vegetables and Corey's got a nice burger. Very nice up here, just chilling in the rooftop bar, very relaxed vibes. Hanging up. So located very, very close to where we're staying at the social hub is Parc de la Montagna. And this is a super busy spot, especially on a sunset like tonight. It is full. There are thousands and thousands of people up here. Um, Charlotte has decided to chill in our nice room for the night because we've had a pretty big travel day coming from the Costa Blanca. But this is the spot to come for sunset. Let me show you how many people are up here. It's a little bit ridiculous. I don't think Charlotte would be enjoying it right now, to be honest. Check this out. And then we've got one of the viewpoints, which there seems to be a bit of a live music performance going on. Let's go and have a look. restaurant in the world yes that's correct not only in Madrid or Spain but in the whole world it is the older restaurant and it is where Ernest Hemingway actually used to frequent he wrote a book in there and nowadays it is just a normal restaurant you can go in there and have some food if you like but a very interesting little fact about Madrid so this stairway is classed as the shortest street in Madrid it is 33 steps long I guess 33 strides and that is it that little stairway there is home to a couple of little stores classed as a street Tick, been to Madrid's shortest streets. This is Plaza Mayor, and in the past, this is where the entertainment used to be. Here, there'll be executions, festivals, uh, markets, and so much more. This whole area actually used to be built of wood, and it burned down three times. Nowadays, it's no longer built of wood, which was a very smart choice, as we're still standing. 
Behind me is a statue of Philip III and once it was blown up and what they found inside was kind of weird and a bit creepy. There was loads of bones of birds and now this explains why they used to say that the original statue was maybe a little bit haunted or cursed because there were some strange noises and some strange smells and that's because the original statue, the horse's mouth was open so birds would go inside, they got trapped in there and they died. So when the sun hit that statue it was warmed up and it stunk and then when it blew up all these dead carcasses of birds and bones all scattered everywhere around this square and now this is a new one with a closed horse mouth just a quick heads up if you are coming to madrid um, there are so many people here trying to capitalize on the tourism here um, there's loads of people dressed up in very very hot <laughs> mickey mouse costumes and other disney characters um, there's people just kind of wandering around asking people for money and there's other people with the bracelets doing all that stuff we've seen all over the world so just be aware I really like looking at all the street names because they have some beautiful illustration. They've got like this artist to do all these lovely little pieces of art that I guess correlate with the history of the street or the name of the street. And it's so much nicer than just a name. It's really uh, pretty and we're going around just putting them all out. So definitely look out for those. Taking a little wander down one of the many picturesque streets here in Madrid. Um, this is just one that is on Google Maps. Seems to be a little bit of artwork and loads of cute little places to go for. Uh, tapas and pinchos and cervecerias. <laughs> uh, cervezas, yeah, all there. There's so many places which we would love to stop in and try some of the local cuisine and enjoy some free tapas with the beers. But we just don't want to risk it. We don't speak Spanish and we're guessing that most of the places don't have plant-based options. There's always like massive legs of ham like on the bars and uh, it's just all very meat-based. So this morning we're heading to Rotero Park and there is a crystal palace there. Very keen to see it, but we were a little bit confused about which um, machines to use at the station. There's ones upstairs that are for the Renfe line, that's like the Spanish National Train Service. Um, but the ones downstairs are for the Metro line, that's the ones we need to use. Um, and we are just getting a public transport card which is 250 um, and then I think it's an extra 150 or something like for a pass on the train. So we're just getting a couple of tickets and then we're off. We have come to Rotero Park now at the special request of Charlotte who wanted to see a crystal palace. Yeah, so it kept appearing on top things to do at Madrid was to come to this park and see this crystal uh, building or it's like, like a, glass a glass house, house building. Yeah. It looked really pretty so we're off to find it. It's a very, very big park. We've got a bit of walking to do. It's very cute, all the people hiring out the little boats. There's families out there, couples. It looks like a really nice activity to do. And it's such a nice day for it. There's loads of little cafes and pop-ups all around this walking area in the lake. I'm looking for an ice cream, actually. We'll see if we can find one. Oh, it's very, very beautiful. spooky isn't it when you look all the way down it's a bit spooky they've got like this music playing too which adds to the atmosphere and maybe i'm not sure if they do this i had no idea this was going to be here or this fog experience maybe because it's winter <laughs> and maybe because the trees are a bit bare but whenever i've seen photos of this place it looks like it's just normal <laughs> that was a very cool surprise experience i was expecting just uh like a glass house, like a big greenhouse. Uh, and they had all these mirrors in there and smoke machines and some music. Very cool, very um, yeah, atmospheric, ethereal kind of feeling vibe in there. Now, we're off to the next adventure. Where are we going? We are gonna go to a cafe. Honest Greens 
is a really funky little restaurant cafe and love these cups. I've gone for a chocolate caramel latte, very tasty sounding. Corey's got a nice latte and ordered some avocado toast. Very busy, very happening. I feel like we're in the um, kind of professional business district of Madrid. I feel a bit like we're in London. Those are cool cafes, restaurants, uh, you know, workers are about busy. Tuesday day, Tuesday lunchtime. But yeah, this is a cool spot. If you are looking for an alternative experience in Madrid, then definitely come to this district. This is Malasana. Uh, here you'll find lots of alternative like vintage stores, um, some like pubs and clubs and stuff, alternative cafes, uh, all that kind of hipster vibe is here. That's a wrap on our 48 hours in Madrid. We hope that you've enjoyed this tour of Spain's historic capital city and let us know in the comments if you're planning to visit. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel. Thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.